Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending upon which part of the world you're in. Thank you for joining us. We know that you are very busy, and uh, therefore we really appreciate you taking the time uh, or choosing to spend time with us uh, today. Uh, and uh, we, we hope this webinar is going to be uh, productive for you uh, and informative. This is Graph Gurus 44. The title is Building the Next Generation Customer Experience with Graph and Machine Learning. Next slide. My name is David Ronald, and I'm Director of Product Marketing at Tiger Graph. And I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Stephen Fuller. Stephen is a senior solutions engineer with Tiger Graph. He brings a long and illustrious track record in solutions engineering, focusing on helping clients adopt new big data technologies uh, that drive actionable analytics and results. Prior to Tiagraph, Stephen has spent time leading teams at Cloudera and at Hewlett Packard. Uh, needless to say, he has a wealth of knowledge and experience in data management and customer analytics. And uh, Stephen is uh, not only a great guy, but he is an excellent presenter and I know you're going to enjoy this webinar. Next slide. So before we get started, just a, a few housekeeping items. Uh, everyone's phone is muted, that's standard practice these days, but that's not a, a signal that we want, uh, that we don't want to hear from you. In fact, we do. We, we, you know, we want to make this webinar as interactive as possible. We're largely doing this for your benefit. So the more you interact, the more questions you ask, I think the richer the experience it will be. Uh, so the best way to submit questions is through the Q&A tab. This webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to you shortly after the conclusion. Uh, the, uh, my colleagues in marketing are very prompt and typically get the, uh, that email out uh, within a few hours. We'll include a link to the slides and we'll include any other material in that email that Stephen thinks will be helpful. Last but not least, if you have any issues with Zoom, please contact uh, either myself or Stephen uh, via the chat. So without any further ado, I'll pass things over to Stephen. Hello, everyone. Um, as David said, my name is Steve Fuller. We're going to spend a few minutes uh, going through this graph guru session. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, next generation customer experience. Uh, before we get into that, let's kind of position this conversation in terms of we've all kind of had these conversations around digital transformation, customer experience, and there's different ways of presenting this topic. Uh, but today we're going to focus on it as it relates to customer experience, customer analytics, and all those different things. Um, just by definition, when we talk about customer experience, we're talking about how organizations and companies establish a relationship with their customers and clients, uh, how they understand all of the different interaction points, the way you communicate with them, uh, the way you provide support, delivery, all those different things through all the different channels uh, and give you and, and allow organizations to get insights and understandings on how to improve, improve customer experience to ultimately drive things like customer lifetime value, uh, to reduce churn, uh, and to ultimately turn your clients and customers into advocates of your product or your organization. If we look at this from this slide that ZDNet uh, has put out, the concept is, is how do you go through from all the efforts that you're doing in marketing and sales and interacting with different people or profiles through all the different channels that are available now. Uh, so when we talk about channels, we're talking about email, mobile app, chat bots, uh, we're even getting into the age of wearable devices, um, having the ability to do online communications with all the different social media networks, and then combining that data with all of your organizational information, your customer history files, uh, supply chain data, product information, and using all that data to create, number one, a single real-time view of the customer that has a set of data that comes from all the different channels, and using that information to not only um, understand how to drive customer experience, but to also create a value exchange. Um, the best way to think of that is, do I have the information 
do you have the intelligence to make real-time recommendations to your customers and clients at any point of contact, be it a website, be it a mobile app, or when they actually walk into a bank or a doctor's office or whatever it is, uh, do you know enough about that to uh, understand that concept? The other component that's becoming really a fundamental driving customer experience is the concept of understanding the customer journey. Uh, what is the journey in which your customers go through as they interact with your organization? Uh, a lot of people talk about this in terms of a sales funnel, uh, but it's really as you integrate and interact with different parts of the organization, do all these organizations share data? Do they have the ability to understand all the components that go into a profile? More importantly, what components of fulfillment are going to indicate if someone's going to churn? Uh, does your response time and customer support uh, influence a customer's behavior? Uh, you providing the right marketing messages and content, does that drive sales? All of these things contribute to uh, a customer experience. There are a couple of trends that are going on right now, uh, and everyone's going to look at them a little different. Each industry has a different flavor, uh, but overall, by and large, most organizations view customer experience as the most uh, exciting opportunity in their organization. Uh, we can look at cost cutting measures, you can look at uh, efficiency measures, uh, but the primary thing that actually drives a lot of opportunity in most organizations is the ability to understand customer experience, sell more products, uh, drive more profitability, and uh, increase sales just by the customers that you existently have, and doing the things that you need to do to make sure that you retain your customers and turn them into long time advocates and actual influencers. Uh, if we look at one survey, basically we're seeing that um, the things that really drive consumers is not always price. It's not always feature function. Uh, consumers have made it clear that organizations that interact with them in a way that demonstrates that they understand who they are, they understand their preferences and they understand their values. These are the types of organizations that consumers are willing to work with. Um, but ultimately, it's really all about that journey. It's about the concept of how do I collect information from all these different channels, be it websites, social media? Uh, how do I collect information from all these different visitors? How do I go through and understand what customers are doing when they are in this discovery phase or shopping phase? Um, how do you go through and what things do uh, people need to understand as they're getting ready to choose? Uh, we get ready to uh, look at this as we go through the Christmas season. You look at Black Friday. It's become very known and evident that people do online shopping. Some people ultimately purchase things online. But after they do their comparison and their choosing, they will actually go to a physical brick and mortar store to make a purchase. Uh, and so as you look at this journey, uh, you begin to start asking questions. And these are different points along this journey that uh, organizations need to be able to analyze. Uh, what are the interaction patterns uh, that people are doing during the discovery phase? Uh, what are the marketing activities that you can do to influence someone moving from the discover phase to the choose phase. And then more importantly, what are the channels that contribute to actual sales uh, at the end of the process? And, and are there some channels that are more influential than other? Uh, there are some use cases out there that state that being able to drive a individually personalized message on Instagram actually has value over sending someone an email with all their information. Uh, so. The whole customer experience concept is having the tools, the technology, and the connected data in place to make decisions at each one of these actual decision points. Ultimately, what we want to be able to do is understand a customer journey. Uh, we'll get into a demo here shortly, but uh, what we want to be able to do is understand how someone can go through that journey, what becomes a typical customer journey for your best customers, and now that you understand that pattern, how can you leverage that pattern to improve the outcomes of some of your other customers? Um, 10 years ago, we would have called this customer segmentation. And you go through and segment your customers on different behaviors, different attributes, and then you actually have different treatments and different plans for all those different segments. 
we now have the ability to understand these patterns in real time and make real time recommendations for next best action, next best offer, and all those particular things within um, an application that has uh, real time capabilities. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, jump into a, a demo of Tiger Graph. Uh, the first thing I want to do is explain uh, our graph database and the model that is associated with it. Um, graph databases are a little different than relational databases or some of the NoSQL stores that are out there. Uh, they are first and foremost very visual. visual. Uh, so what you see out here as a graph schema is very visual. The data actually represents itself and is stored in the same manner that it is visualized. Uh, the graph database is broken up into nodes that actually have attributes or labels. Uh, that's why Tiger Graph is a label property graph. So for the profiles, I have some demographic data, age, income, uh, life stage, date of birth, things of that nature. Uh, and then we also have um, attributes around their contact information, uh, email, phone, IP address, device, uh, the actual physical address, things of that nature. Uh, in addition to that, we've also gone through and uh, have modeled in orders and products that a profile has purchased, uh, the store, if they purchased from a store. And then we also have things around the campaigns and marketing interactions that they've had, uh, any social media posts where they have interacted with your organization through uh, uh, social media profiles. And then also we have some transactions around um, customer support. Um, I'll go through quickly and just show from a technical standpoint, uh, you can use Tiger Graph's um, user interface to also go through and map data to these attributes and load that data. And you can also go use this information to go through and just load that data and get an understanding of how much information is in your schema. Uh, but the advantage of having this data graphically is now I want to have the ability to go through and explore my graph and understand the relationships and the connectivities that we get from what we call relationship analytics or connected intelligence. Um, Tiger Graph has a very uh, user intuitive explore graph feature. And what I'll go through and do is I'll explore some graphs from, from different objects like a store. Uh, I'll tell it to randomly pick 10 stores and very quickly, I get 10 stores that are returned. Once again, graph databases are very visual. So we return the information in a visual format. I can go through and hover over each one of the stores and I get all the attributes about the store. So I get the store name, where it's located at, it's lat long, uh, the city. And then there's some attributes around, uh, is it a, does the store have a hair salon in it? Does it have an auto center or can we do ship the store? Uh, and very quickly, I can go through and drill down on the store and get all the information associated with it. Um, instantaneously, when I drill down on the store, I get a list of all the different orders that came from that store. Uh, I can also drill down on the orders and quickly figure out who purchased those orders and what products came with it. All of this is happening in real time and it gives you the ability to continually explore the graph uh, in any way you want. Ultimately, what we want to be able to do, one of the first steps in customer experience is always that elusive customer 360, is that ability to first capture and understand all the data you want about all your different customers and do that in a holistic view. So for my profile, what I want to be able to do is quickly go out and find some profiles. Um, I told Tiger Graph to go out and get, a five, uh, get 10 random profiles. Uh, it returned John Maya, uh, David Jacobs, and Brian Phillips. I have information about them, what life stage they're in, what's, uh, what's their affluence model, and all those different things. And I can quickly go out and get that information. The next step I want to be able to do is to show you that not only can I retrieve that information quickly, almost inherently, the graph technology gives me a 360 degree view of a customer. So through one hop, I was able to quickly go out and grab all the information that I needed about David Jacobs. I have all the campaigns that he was a part of. I have uh, any posts that he's been a part of. 
I have any interest that he's made a concept of plus the orders, uh, IP address, and the data source that he came in. This information is real time. It's connecting the data in real time. And I have the ability to do that in a responsive manner. Side note, just on the technology, if I would have did a similar query in a relational database, uh, it would have took minutes to return this. This was returning in subseconds, and quite frankly, the majority of the time is rendering this subgraph. Um, that connection is what we actually call one hop. And so now within one hop, I have all the information I need that is that customer 360 view of my consumer. So technically, I have already created a platform and a process to get customer 360. It's about connected data. It's about having the ability to bring in data from all your channels. Uh, it's about the ability to bring in omni-channel information and to look at it and explore this data any way I want. So this becomes one of the key advantages to addressing customer 360 in a graph database. Uh, now I can go through and do hops and I wanna go through and just traverse this consumer and see information about it. So one thing I can do is I can converse just this campaign. So he was part of an upsell campaign for books. And now all of a sudden I see all of the other people that were similarly part of this upsell campaign. So I can traverse that in terms of looking at who he has in common as far as what campaigns he was part of. And I can also go through and look at the orders that he has. So quickly I traversed it, he made an order and in that order he bought a couple products. Uh, he brought some sleds and snow tubes, and then he also uh, purchased um, some sandboxes and water tables for art don't play. So just from the products that he purchased, I know that this guy is interested in outdoor activity. Uh, I also know which store that this product came from. And not only can I figure that out, I can also go through and see who else has purchased at that store. So now I'm beginning to uncover connected relationships that are inherent in graph data that would have never been provided through transactional systems. Just through a series of hops, I can go through and figure out that this customer, John Maya, purchased something at a store in uh, out in Lonto, California. Now, I also know that there are other people that purchased at that store as well. And so I can do that through a series of hops. And so that's what we call connected, connected hops and, and all those things. <clears throat> so that's the concept of being able to do customer 360 within a graph data store that gives you the ability to traverse that graph and to explore all the things that you want to uh, related to customer 360. The key thing here is to kind of compare and contrast uh, the way graph databases entire graph does customer 360 with um, other technology. Uh, the other technology will look at it a little different. Um, relational databases are going to have problems with the joins. They're going to have problems with performance and speed and scalability. Uh, and so a lot of people have gone through and said, let's try to do this in a NoSQL data store. Um, in all fairness, the NoSQL data store is going to store the data very similar in a way that graph databases do. The difference is with the NoSQL store, you have lost all of your schema attributes, you've lost all of the things that go along with writing SQL. And so now you can do all these activities in a NoSQL store, but it now requires a different skill set. So one of the inherent advantages of doing customer 360 and customer experience within uh, TireGraph is we still provide a graph query language that allows you to go through and do SQL analytics plus a lot of the complicated aggregations and accumulators that you see some from of the big data technology. So now what I want to do is talk about some of the key use cases that are going to come out of being able to do customer 360. So for these uh, use cases, there's a couple things that you need to be able to do. The first one is to be able to create a 360 degree view of your customer. Uh, we have spent a few minutes talking about that. Uh, then what we want to be able to do is talk about the ability to do marketing analytics. Uh, the primary driver of customer 360 and customer experience is to communicate or create consistent communications with your consumers and customers uh, in a way that they uh, will receive it, respond to it, 
and take some type of action. Um, one of the other things with customer experience is being able to find your best customers, figure out who they are and treat them different, and then also identify similar customers. So now we're gonna start getting into some of the graph algorithm techniques that allow you to, uh, uh, to look at uh, some of the graph algorithms that come out of graph databases that support customer experience. So um, there's a question from one of the uh, attendees and the question is what's the difference between the customer 360 view you showed and customer data platforms? Um, technically, I don't think there's a big difference. There's a different, there's several ways to kind of look at customer data platforms and customer 360 view. Um, the tire graph approach is we're going to do it in a performant way that is scalable and you have the ability to bring in data from all your different data sources. So inherently, Tiger Graph has the ability to bring in batch data. It has the ability to bring in micro batch data and streaming data. So you can connect data points from all your different sources. Um, the other thing is, is uh, we're going to allow all of that data to identify how it fits into that overall customer 360 schema. So the biggest thing that I'll say is the added advantage is Tiger Graph provides the ability to kind of do entity resolution or profile matching, if you will. Some of the data platforms do that as well. There are some techniques in graph databases that lend themselves to doing that in a much easier way. Um, also in this, um, this demo, we're going to kind of talk about having a hybrid transaction and analytical platform. Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, how do you create some uh, graph algorithms and uh, processing to understand where your customers are in your customer journey. So um, I'm going to go back to the demo. What I've done is I've actually created several GSQL queries uh, that will address some of the use cases that you want to do in customer 360 and customer experience. Uh, the first use case is clearly to be able to create a 360 degree view of your customer. The next use case is to go through and create and do some type of entity resolution. Uh, as you can see from my model, uh, I call these guys profiles uh, because I'm getting omni-channel information. I may have emails, I may have IP addresses, I may have physical addresses, the names may be spelled different, all of these different things, but I still need the ability to combine and correlate all of these profiles into one consumer person, and in some cases in a household. So the first use case that we want to do in customer experience is to be able to go through and figure out which ones are the same. So we actually have a graph SQL query statement that's going to go out and look at all of the profiles and create a really simple algorithms to see which ones are the same. Um, the logic here is really simple. We're going out and we are going to traverse our graph database and we're going to go out and see which one of these profiles have something in similar. Um, from a graph traversal standpoint, I'm going to go through and just look at all of my edges. This is one of the powers of connected data and relationships. In this example, I don't even have to interrogate the actual email addresses or uh, physical addresses. I know by the links, if the links and the connections are the same, I know that they share attributes in common. So if they have the same address, I'm going to give them a score of 0.2. If they have the same email, I'm going to give them a score of 0.3. If they have the same IP address, I'm going to give them a score. We're going to calculate that score. And for everyone that hits that threshold, we're going to insert some values within a edge that we are calling the same profile. So I'm doing that entity resolution. Uh, as a side note, this is also one of the differentiators for Tiger Graph. We have the ability to actually update and insert the label property graph in real time, just like you would in a relational database. Uh, so now you have a graph database that gives you that performance from running a graph database uh, that gives you that uh, real time transactions for inserts and updates to bring in streaming campaign data, to take real-time information from social media channels, to take real-time sales information, and then run calculations on that 
and pre present some machine learning uh, to your uh, customer facing or business facing applications. So this query is set up to actually interrogate one particular person at a time. I'm going to run a threshold that says if it is greater than 0.5, I'm assuming that they're the same person. Uh, but I also need the ability to go run this across my entire uh, database. So I created an outer query. The outer query is going to go through, collect all the profiles, and for each profile, it's going to call a subquery, and it's going to hit that threshold. The query is parameterized, so I'm going to say anybody that has a threshold of 0.5 or more, meaning of my five elements, you had at least two are in common, I'm going to call you the same. And of course, we know this query is going to run and it's going to insert some entries in that same profile. The first thing it did is deleted the entries from the same profile, and then it went through and added those entries to the same profile. I'm creating data. The way we'll validate that is we'll go look at that same profile vertex, and we'll see that I found 48 people that are essentially the same. Uh, it can change. I'll change. I'll run the query again. I'll change that threshold, and I'll make the threshold something smaller, like 0.3. And we'll see that it'll delete those, insert them again, and we'll have additional set of people that we have considered to be the same profile. We run this entity resolution use case in multiple ways. Um, some people do it with machine learning. Some people call some NLP algorithms to deal with name. Um, the calculations of that are going to be based on your business requirements. Uh, what we at Tiger I think is important is G-SQL or Graph SQL language is Turing complete, meaning any calculations you can create in something like Java or Python, you can do those calculations inside of G-SQL as well. So that's the first use case for customer experience. Uh, essentially, these things are kind of foundational. You want to be able to create a connected graph with all of your consumer information. The first step you want to do is go through and do some kind of uh, entity resolution. Uh, now, there are some additional things we want to do. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll say, uh, can I do what I've done in a traditional SQL database? Can I do just sales analytics? I have product data out here. I want to go out here and just do some sales reporting. Uh, so now what we're going to do is run a query that is essentially a use case from what you would normally get from something like MySQL or something of that nature. And we're going through just looking at our product sales. We are grouping them by the category name, the sales date, the item quantity, and the sales amount. And by default, uh, with, with TireGraph, it outputs the data in the JSON format. So you can take this JSON, you can send it to something like Click or Tableau or whatever your BI tool is. The key advantage is, is that I now have a graph database but I can still do the analytical queries that I would traditionally do in a data mark, something like Snowflake or Redshift. I can still do that within a tiger graph in my graph database using graph analytics. So the first use case is can I go do sales analysis? Um, then we also have the ability to do marketing analytics. So I wanna go do a, a traditional campaign response. How many people did I send some kind of offer to? How many people were solicited? how many people were actually responding. And we'll have the ability to go run that query as well. Uh, this one returned very quickly. And the result sets are, I have campaigns. Uh, I know what the key code is. Here's the number of people that solicited. Here's the number of people that responded. Got it. Uh, so we also have a, another question from the audience. And it's, uh, would you touch on the machine learning capabilities of Tiger Graph? Uh, very good question, and it's actually part of the next step of the use cases that we want to talk about. Um, what we've done now is just traditional things you would do in any customer data platform. We've talked about doing entity resolution and customer 360. Now we want to get to some of the graph algorithms that graph technology provides. Uh, one of the first things we want to be able to do is go run some similarity algorithms. So I want to have the ability to go find what I consider to be a good customer and I want to go find and run a graph algorithm that says, go find me all the similar customers. Uh, so that's what this use case looks for. Uh, in both cases, I'm going to run a query. This one, I'm actually going to prompt for some actual parameters. 
So within my graph algorithm, I'm looking for people in the profiles. I have this one customer that I think is a really good customer. And then I want to go find the top people that are very similar to him. This is going to be a graph algorithm. So I run this query and it goes out and it finds that particular person, that profile that I said that was a good customer. And it went out and found 50 people that were similar. This is going through doing graph analytics. Uh, I'll make a simplified approach to kind of explain how this algorithm works. Uh, all machine learning tools work a little different. Graph databases have a distinct advantage, just in the nature and the way in which it stores data. So for this profile, Susan Harper, uh, in your mind, think that Susan Harper has a, an adjacency list. I have Susan Harper, and then I have pointers to where all of her data exists. So I know which campaign she's been a part of. I know which friends she has and who she's connected to. I know her interest. I know what orders she's made, and I know which uh, interactions I've had with her. That becomes a pattern. It becomes a, a pattern to here's what my customer looks like. I'll drill down and look at the subgraph for some of these customers. And what you'll figure out is all of these customers have the same patterns. They have the same number of campaigns, the same number of friends, the same number of orders. And I was able to do that. The graph algorithm is looking at the graph data to figure out what's that pattern. And each person will ultimately get a similarity score. So as I go through and look at my best customer, it's going to go through and rank them, create a set of all of the data they have, and then it's going to run a similarity score on those patterns. Uh, and that's what I look at. In this case, I also have the ability to go through and look at this information, uh, not only in a JSON output, but also can get a graphical output as well. Uh, as I begin to um, look at this output and explore this, this is where graph visualization comes in. So now when I have the ability to go through and figure out why was someone selected, I can very quickly go out and do this visualization and start expanding it. And as I expand them, you also see some connections that will show up. I know that this person, Deborah Harvey, is connected because they share, they both called in support for the same reason with another customer. Uh, so now you're seeing connections live connections show up. So I expanded uh, Victor Hernandez, and we also see that they also contact the support for a general question. And this person has the same interest in finance and trading. All of these are connections that are available to you in real time that you can begin to explore the graph to understand a lot of things about what drives your customer experience. So that's one of the things. Um, in addition to this graph algorithm, there are several algorithms. So for this one, we just ran what we call a similarity algorithm. Uh, we did this inside of GSQL. The similarity score is looking at the different components of the, uh, of the graph schema and it's identifying what's similar and what's in common uh, for those. Um, we can also go run algorithms around you know, identifying your best customer. That can be done in a variety of ways uh, for each organization, for each use case, it's going to be different. It can be best customer in terms of total sales. It can be most active customer who has the most purchases. Whatever those rules are, you have the ability to go through and run algorithms to figure out what your best customer is. Uh, I've went through and I've ranked my customers and I got the top um, 100 and I based them on the order account, the number of orders they made, and then the order amount and I can go through and rank that. Then I can go through and run a similarity score. There are about 18 different out of the box graph algorithms that Tiger Graph provides for customer experience. So there can be uh, centrality algorithms, um, community detection algorithms, which really supports the whole customer experience segmentation. Uh, are your consumers uh, segmented by the particular product they like. Uh, in addition to that, we can also do algorithms around product recommendations. Uh, so I actually have a another product recommendation. Um, what I love about Tiger Graph and its algorithms, we have standard algorithms that come out of the box, uh, but we also have the ability to uh, update and enhance our algorithms. 
So in this particular product recommendation algorithm, I approached it a little different. Most product recommendation algorithms use pay trails. They're gonna go through and say, hey, this person bought a product, go find the products that's most similar to that. Uh, I did this a little different. The first thing I wanted to do is I wanna make a product recommendation that is personalized, meaning I wanna go find someone that they're similar to that bought these products and then go make recommendations based on how similar you are to your profiles, same age, maybe the same geographic location, things of that nature. So this is what I call a personalized product recommendation engine. Uh, in the same way, I'm gonna give it a profile. I'm just gonna give it a random person. And I'm gonna go out there and find someone that looks like him and then the products they purchased. And then I'm gonna make product recommendations based on that. Just a way to customize some standard algorithms to make them fit whatever your customer experience is. You may be an organization that sells products, you may be an organization that actually uh, sells services. So having a generic recommendation engine may not work for you, uh, but this is all part of the customer experience concept. One of the things that's also part of this is we have the ability to take these algorithms and put them behind a secure REST endpoint API. And now all of your algorithms can be integrated with any product or any client facing application you have. Uh, we have one of our largest customers wish that they do their product recommendations on their website and they're all using Tiger Graph. And of course, that's going to be product driven. And all they have to do is call this API every time you're visiting a website and it provides a list of recommended products to you. Uh, if you use different apps, you'll understand that you can look at the way Wish does its product recommendations and it seems to be um, have much more, many more dimensions than what you would if you were just looking at something on Amazon or eBay. Um, you can also integrate this data with um, um, some of your marketing applications. So if you're running a marketing application and you want to go select a list, you can have a graph algorithm that says, go find the people that I think that will respond to this campaign. That can be a graph query. You can call that query and return that segment to your actual marketing application. Uh, with this application, with the API, you can integrate it that way. Or, of course, you can naturally share data with the output that comes from JSON and all those different things. There is another question that says, um, can you talk about handling uh, time series data and IoT data in Tiger Graph? Um, yes. So temporal data um, actually models out very well. Um, if you think about time series data, uh, it actually fits in a graph schema quite nicely. So you can have years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, seconds, and you can graph that out and create different vertexes for each one of those decision points. Uh, and then you have the ability to bring that data in. And now you begin to create temporal analytics just on your time series data. The beauty of that is you can also go through and connect different vertexes to different components of that time. So there can be some things that are attached to the month vertex. There can be some IoT streaming data that's connected to the data that's coming through in a second level or a minute level. Uh, there can be sales data that's associated with data that's coming in at a year level. The power and the thing you need to kind of walk away with is that temporal data can be modeled in a label property graph at whatever level you need it to support your use case. Uh, in addition to that, especially IoT data can get very large, especially if you're trying to store data by the second. We have different um, aggregation techniques so you can optimize how you actually store that data over time. From there, it just becomes like any other component. It becomes a connected component that's going to get value from being in a graph database. So in a temporal analysis, you want to be able to find out which consumers have made a purchase at the same day. That becomes a very simple graph query that says, do they have the same temporal object or uh, temporal day uh, in common? You can also go through and start looking at that data in time uh, in a time series sequence. So you can start looking at data over time, uh, how that changes uh, the, a person's behavior. Uh, that is a big part of 
any customer lifetime value calculation. You want to be able to understand someone's interactions with you over time and not only quantify that, but make some predictions and recommendations as a result of that. What I like about Tiger Graph or time series or temporal analysis is you still have the ability to bring in other attributes. There are a lot of temporal data products out there. They really specialize in time, but to add other components brings a layer of complexity. Um, for Tiger Graph, it's just components of a labor property graph, uh, so it supports that. Okay, so we, we hit a couple of these use cases for doing customer experience. Um, we've talked about how you can go through and do the foundational components of it, uh, which means you need to be able to do customer 360. You need to be able to do entity resolution. You need to be able to do some of the traditional uh, analytical queries. Uh, and we also talked about the need to have the ability to update this graph in real time and take action on it. Um, talked about running some of the graph algorithm alg algorithms that support this um, and so the next thing we'll kind of talk about is just machine learning um, how do you take what you're doing in your graph database and extend your machine learning uh, so we have a very open framework so of course you can interact with tiger graph through our visual ui you can also integrate with tiger graph through um, our actual uh, API where we open up all the queries uh, to um, uh, open a REST point MP API. Or you can take this data and push it into something like Python or R and push over what we call explainable AI. Um, we have a lot of our banks doing this, especially if they're looking at uh, uh, AML uh, fraud detection. Uh, a lot of the products on the market today, it's really hard for banks to figure out why a transaction was identified as fraud. Uh, with Tiger Graph, you have the ability to not only generate that score, but you also have the ability to have that traceability that says, this transaction became fraud. I'd like to know why. So we can actually share a subgraph that says, this transaction has all of these components in it. Uh, it was purchased at this store with these people. Uh, and these are the components that led to it being deemed a, a fraudulent transaction. So the subgraph, if you will, becomes your history to determine why you have explainable AI. So it doesn't become a black box. So whenever you're running any kind of algorithm, you have the ability to capture that subgraph or all the information that went into that store and preserve that so you can explain what your scores are in the back end. Uh, that also speaks to our connectivity with some of the you know, high value analytical tools like Python and R uh, and SAS. And we actually have some of our larger customers that are actually taking their model language, turned it into C++ code, and we actually run them as UDFs inside of Tiger Graph, and they're doing their real-time model scoring across a 30 terabyte graph database. There's another question around how does Tiger Graph handle sensitive data? Uh, there's, um, from a platform perspective, we do two things. Uh, one, we do data encryption on data at rest and data in motion, uh, just like most products out there. The other thing we also do is we do what we call multi schemas. So you can actually create a schema and separate them just like you would in a relational database to where you have one schema that's production, one schema that's for data scientists, one schema that may be for UAT. And you can, can begin to share objects across schemas and you can um, you know, provide certain elements to one group of users and remove elements from other users, uh, just like you would when you were in a relational database. Um, if you can see this schema here, uh, all the schemas that actually have a globe object on it, they are considered global schemas. I can switch to a global view and now you're going to see that these objects don't have anything because this is my global view because I am the administrator. Uh, but when I go to the local view of the schema, uh, you're going to see that these are local objects. Uh, in this example, I don't have local objects, but what you could. And so we use that for role-based access control combined with data encryption and data security at rest and across the wire. Um, and then more importantly, one of the things we can do is 
uh, from doing graph analytics and you're talking about connectivity, you're talking about relationships, one of the things we highly recommend is when you create this, um, this graph database, you want to make sure that you're really focusing on the elements that lend themselves to connected intelligence. Uh, there, there may be some components that are not required, uh, and then there could be some data masking to take place uh, as you bring the data in. Okay, I'm going to um, switch back to the slides. Uh, we're going to share, you know, just a couple of summary elements about this uh, and talk about some of the things that a lot of our clients are doing with customer experience. So in this, customer experience as a whole seems to be very simplistic or analytical in nature. Uh, what's really unique about the whole customer experience domain is it always drives action. There are always things that you need to do based on your findings. Uh, Tiger Graph supports that through you know, what we call a hybrid transaction, transactional and analytical platform. There are many platforms out there today from big data to Hadoop, to Datastack, Spark, all those different things, um, but they all play a specific role. When we say we're a hybrid, we mean you have the ability to do analytics on this platform using graph algorithms, using machine learning that supports your customer experience um, initiatives, but you can also take actions. So if, I, if you want to generate a marketing list, if you want to generate a next best action list, uh, if you want to create customer segments and all those things, you have the ability to do that. Um, when we think about it, think that Tiger Graph is a graph database, a label property graph database that's MPP aware but it acts very similar to what you would see in a relational database. Inserts, updates, deletes, and they're all in real time and they are immediately available for additional processing. So there isn't that concept to say eventual consistency. Why are people actually doing this for uh, using Tiger Graph for customer experience? Uh, the main re reason is real time decisions. Customer experience is really hard. That's why we started out this conversation talking about digital transformation. Uh, there is a huge effort to bring all these digital touch points, digital signals, bring them together and be able to respond in real time, regardless of the channel through the graph algorithms that you can wrap around the rest point in, rest, restful endpoint uh, API. You can now make recommendation decisions in real time what, uh, what, with whatever application that you are using. Uh, we have a large healthcare company um, that has their total uh, member universe, which is about 30 mem million members that are pro providing real-time care plans through their call center whenever someone calls in. So if someone calls in to check on their healthcare benefits, it says, hey, you need to go make a wellness visit at this doctor, and oh, by the way, there is a eye doctor within five miles from you. All of this in real time based on their uh, medical transactions and history. Also, we have customers that are doing real time recommendation engines like Wish. We have customers that are looking at this data on set top boxes and making real time movie recommendations just like you would do like in Netflix. The key to this is having the ability to do real time decisions. The second reason why this becomes important for Tiger Graph and why a lot of our customers are using it for customer experience is the ability to do real consumer insights, leveraging the graph algorithms, understand community detections. Do you know that someone really has been influenced by uh, Demi Lovato? Uh, being able to sit, figure out which people have the same purchase patterns, which people are within the same sales stage or sales funnel, all through algorithms not by someone just making assumptions based on your age and gender. Now, so understanding those true customer patterns as it relates to graph analytics is very important. There's also a very important um, anti-effect for that. If you know the pattern of your best customers, you also can do the inverse of that and understand the patterns of your worst customers and leverage that to understand churn. Uh, I don't want to get really technical right here, but that is the reason why trying to do churn in a relational database or a NoSQL database is exponentially hard and expensive. 
because everything you're doing is about trying to find out what someone has not done. Relational databases are great at saying, here's what someone has done. But when you do the inverse of that, it becomes a very uh, cost uh, prohibitive calculation and becomes very expensive. That pattern and that anti-pattern are both simple standard algorithms that you get out of the box with graph technology. Uh, and last but not least, you, know, you get the ability to understand relationships. You get the ability to understand what kind of relationship a person has with your organization, who influences them, what products, what messaging, what components through that customer journey have actually had the most outcome. And that outcome can be on different dimensions. It can be on purchases, it can be on interactions, or it can be on your net promoter score, whatever your corporate initiative is, how do you understand what those relationships are? And then how do you take action to improve that? We've seen a lot of business impact come from this. These are all the traditional things. Uh, but what makes this important from Tiger Graph standpoint is you actually now have the tools, the analytics, and the decisioning point to truly influence improving cross-sell and upsell by having the ability to do real-time recommendations and next best actions at the point of contact irregardless if it's a chat bot, an email, or someone called into customer support. And we see banks doing this in real time when someone calls in and they make a real time uh, recommendation on a particular banking product or changing the type of checking account they have in real time. Um, you also have the ability to improve your customer satisfaction. You know that someone called in to support three times. So there's no need to send them an email about something they wouldn't visit your website for you know in real time that they received it. Um, right now, the name of the game for customer experience is don't, don't do any harm. So with the shotgun ap approach to omni-channel, a lot of organizations are saying, hey, someone asked a question and I'm just gonna answer this question on every channel because you can tell that the channels don't have any interaction between each other. Um, also, you have the ability to be real specific about someone's preferences. I know what their contact preference and frequency is for email versus phone. And by the way, I know that I've emailed these people because uh, I've been able to understand that because they all came from the same uh, IP address. And finally, from real business impact should be able to be achieved by running this type of customer experience solution in Tiger Eye to truly understand purchase behaviors, so you can identify who is most likely to purchase this way in this pattern, uh, to improve your offers and truly make them personalized based on what you know about a consumer and ultimately drive that long-term lifetime value that makes a good customer not only profitable, but makes them someone that, become, that can become a brand advocate for your product. Uh, another thing is ultimately we know that the way you affect bottom line in any organization is you improve your uh, upselling, your cross-selling, and you retain your customers. And that's going to be the things that ultimately do this. Last but not least, we'll kind of address uh, one of the things that Tiger Graph provides. Um, graph databases and graph analytics lead themselves to be very effective in all the algorithms. Uh, but quite often, there is a need to go through and continually explore data uh, drill down on subgraphs for consumers and the products they have, and to be able to do an investigation. Um, so we offer up a toolkit for customer experience. It's a toolkit that has a foundational set of graph algorithms, uh, has foundation um, uh, use cases for doing customer 360, um, community detection, uh, things like segmentation and targeting. How do you segment your uh, your consumer population or your client population. Um, and it has some uh, graphical uh, wizards and screens to allow you to get the analytics and the uh, visualization from that that you need. I'm going to pass it off to David, see if there's any other questions or uh, things that we need to address. Uh, but thank you for your time. If you have any other questions, ping them in the uh, chat window. Uh, we will try to answer now or we can follow up after this session uh, if there's some things in detail we need to address. Thanks, Stephen. That was 
that was certainly the most thorough customer experience demo that I've had the opportunity to, to witness. So thank you very much. Um, we're getting short of time, so I don't think we'll have the opportunity to cover all of the questions. Um, there are, so, but let's do a couple. Uh, one of which is, can you integrate the results and analytics with marketing technologies, with the marketing, with the MarTech stack, I guess, is the question. I'm sorry, could you repeat that again? Yeah. Can you integrate these results and the analytics that you've been describing with, with marketing technologies? Yes. Sorry about that. Yes. Yeah, so Target Graph is really open. We can integrate the results, not only the recommendations or the outputs of the algorithms with other marketing technologies um, through our API, or we can do data shares with things like Unica or, uh, or Adobe. And especially when people are looking for a segmentation list or marketing list, you can have algorithms that run behind it. Um, and you can basically say, hey, go get me the next thousand people that I want to market for, for this particular product. Uh, without having someone to go through and build out a SQL statement looking for attributes for people in this age range. You can actually use the uh, machine learning behind the scene to say, here's the next group of people that you need to market for this particular product and then integrate that with whatever your marketing application is. Awesome. Okay. Another question uh, is, are any of the widgets available? I think that's referring to the uh, toolkits that you just talked yes. about. Yes. Very good question. So uh, what graph technology, there are several open source widgets that are available. Um, some of them from Graphistry, D3, things of that nature. And then there are some companies that have paid widgets. Our toolkit is a combination of both. Uh, we look at it from a perspective of what are you trying to achieve? And then we provide widgets for that particular use case. So if you want to do a no chart analysis, or if you want to do a Sankey chart analysis, or if you want to integrate your graph results with a BI chart, uh, we have categorized our widgets that way, as opposed to saying, here's just something to look at your graph data. Uh, so that's what makes our toolkit a little unique. Awesome. Uh, one final question. Uh, does it make the data available by auto generated GraphQL services? Ah, yes. Um, a month ago, I probably wouldn't have understood that question, but we actually have a client <laughs> that is, um, they use voice technology to create and generate automatic queries. They submit those queries through our, uh, to our graph database through the API, and then the results are returned. Uh, so think of it as like in a BI with click, you have a generic query that has a bunch of parameters, parameterized for the date, parameterized for the store, the location of the product. Uh, we can do those same concepts and activities and the results can be auto-generated and sent back. Um, there's another component that's not, that we didn't address to here is that we actually have a, a, a visual query builder. So for people that may or may not understand all the things around graph databases and writing graph traversal queries. Uh, we've broken that down into a visual editor to help people do that as well. Great, thank you. Um, my apologies to the people who've submitted questions uh, and we haven't answered. I think in the interest of time, there's just one minute left until the top of the hour, we should uh, move forward and wrap up uh, the webinar. So if you've submitted questions, there are a couple of people who've done so. Uh, we will respond to your questions uh, via email. Stephen, uh, could you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. So uh, we are, uh, our next webinar uh, is going to be uh, next Wednesday, uh, a week from today, and it's at the same time. And ironically, it's on the same topic, but uh, the format will be a little different. It's going to be a longer event and it'll be more interactive. So. If you found this uh, event today to sort of, if it's whetted your appetite, so to speak, uh, we, we encourage you to uh, consider attending uh, the workshop uh, next week. Uh, and uh, when we send out the slides, you'll be able to click on that link to register. And we try to uh, have weekly webinars, at least weekly. So do keep an eye on that uh, webpage, uh, middle of the slide on the right. 
tigraph.com/webinar. Uh, uh, we, you know, we we are we're working to provide at least weekly and more frequently than that, either through our own events that we're hosting or through partners that we're uh, working with. Next slide, please, Stephen. Yeah, and David, I'll add that in the session next week, we're going to actually build out this customer experience demo. So you'll be able to create a TG Cloud account. We're going to build a schema, load the data, and we'll walk you through creating some of the graph algorithm query that you saw today. Oh, cool. Very cool. All right. Um, so if what you've seen today is interesting to you and you want to get started with Tiger Graph, then there's a few different things we recommend. The best way is to try Tiger Graph Cloud, and I'll talk to that in more depth in a, on the next slide. Uh, you can also download our Enterprise Edition, and that's free to use up to 50 gigabits. You can take our, you can do an online demo, something we call test drive. Uh, there's different, different demos set up for different use cases. Uh, and we have videos and so forth to walk you through how to get going. Um, uh, also, we highly recommend you get certified. Uh, and what that means is that there's, uh, you can go, you can watch some videos um, and then take tests at the end. There's two levels of certification. There's what we call the 101 certification, which is a general exposure to um, Tiger Graph. And then there's a more detailed, more focused one on machine learning. Um, you can take them in any order. There's no prerequisites. Uh, and then if, when you pass, which I'm sure you will, uh, then it will send you a certificate and we'll mail you a t-shirt. Last but not least, we encourage you to join our community. Oftentimes, if you are having an issue with a problem and you want to get help, having your peers address the issue and guiding you through it might be more effective perhaps than reaching out to one of our experts. Who knows? Anyway, uh, joining the community is, is certainly uh, something we recommend. Next slide. Uh, so I mentioned about cloud. The beauty of cloud is that uh, it's, it's a quick way and an easy way for you to dip your toes in the water. You can start in minutes. You can build out a solution. Uh, in just a few hours and then deploy it in, in days uh, or you know a day. Um, it's free. Uh, there are free tiers. Uh, another thing we've done to help people get started is pre-populated uh, the cloud with multiple starter kits. There's over 20 uh, different starter kits. Stephen was demonstrating one of those today. Uh, they have, they're pre-populated with schema, uh, with data, and so forth, so you can begin to get exposure to Tigerath in that way by using you know, what's already in place, or you can customize uh, to your own needs. Um, but again, I want to underscore that it's free. Uh, and uh, if you have any technical issues, we're here to help. Uh, and I think it's a great way to get started. So next uh, slide, Stephen. Uh, this brings us to the end of the webinar. Uh, I apologize for being a wee bit uh, over the time. Uh, we know that you are very busy. Uh, we know you had many choices on how you could have spent the past you know, hour. And we are flattered that you've chosen to spend it with us. And you know, if you're still with us at this point, uh, we're doubly flattered. Uh, we hope you found this webinar to be informative. And we hope that our enthusiasm for Tiger Graph has been contagious. Thank you for attending.